Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone is doing well or you're doing as best as you can if you're dealing with a severe malignant narcopath, which is the term I use for a severe malignant narcissist. Those bordering on a psychopath or a sociopath as well and who also manifest tendencies that are sadomasochistic many times. So these types will rock your world, will traumatize the heck out of you, and they're life altering. So if you are currently dealing with someone like that, my heart goes out to you. I hope these videos will help you with information and uh, support, as well as those who have left situations with those types and are in the process of healing. And for those of you who are trying to go no contact, but perhaps are having a hard time, I hope these videos will give you the strength to remain no contact and to move on with God's purpose for your life. Now, we all know if we've encountered one of these severe malignant narcissists that, um, you know, something is off with them. Let's be real. They're not normal human beings that are just, uh, displaying some bad behavior. Now people can have breakups or work situations or a family relative that is uh, maybe somebody that rubs you the wrong way or somebody you don't get along with, but these types really display premeditated evil and are very manipulative. They set up traps for people. Um, they really target their victims like their prey and pursue them with the love bombing, etc. Uh, but their whole intention is not to love them. Their whole intention is to destroy them, which is, you know, a tactic from the adversary. Now, this video is to really um, give you some points. You know, if somebody has an argument with you about, you know, whether these types are demonic in origin or not, you can refer to these uh, points that I'm I'm going to make right now that uh, are the reasons why I feel and many others feel that these types on earth are a form of spiritual warfare in these last days and are indeed a form of spiritual warfare against God's people. Um, you know, for some reason with these types, the trauma bond or what I call demonic stronghold is very hard to break. These ties with the narcissist go on forever and the addiction is not with the actual person, you know, who we knew to be the narcissist. It's with what they presented. So, you know, the healing process is mourning who we thought the narcissist was, not who they actually were. Because who we found out they actually were <laughs> was a demonic representative on earth. But we try to think of the initial person we met during the love bombing that kind, nice person who did everything right, who seemed too good to be true and wasn't true. But these are the other points I'm going to make. And, uh, you know, see what you think. I'd love to hear your comments after, at the end of this video or after you watch it to see what your feelings are. And uh, if you have any added points you'd like to add to these. But these were the ones I thought of if someone is making the argument as to whether these types are truly our demonic representatives on earth or not. Um, well, number one, there's no cure for these types. There isn't a cure for narcissism or malignant narcissism. Even the severe types, you know, they can't really find a cause. They can say it's a missing neuron, but again, that doesn't make any logical sense for promiscuity, lying, bullying, stalking, and all the other things they do that are manipulations. Doesn't make sense. Also, um, they can't uh, be counseled because, frankly, you can't counsel a demon. And most counselors don't do demons because uh, th there's no hope. You know, these malignant narcissists can't be helped. So, uh, you know, clinical therapists are basically doing damage control. All they're doing is picking up the pieces for the victims, for the targets, helping them rebuild their lives, deal with the severe PTSD, deal with the losses, deal with the depression and the anxiety that the victims suffer. So basically, the therapists are doing damage con control on the victims 
Everybody's getting counseled by the therapists after this demonic entity enters their lives, except for the malignant narcissists themselves. Most therapists will not even deal with them. It's pointless. It, it's really a waste of their time. It's devastating to the people that are targeted. And those are the ones always uh, needing the counseling and help, but the actual one with the problem gets off scot-free and does even worse to more people down the road. So that's one reason. They're resistant to counseling because demons can't be counseled. There's no medication for them. Uh, there isn't an anti-evil medicine out there as far as I know. Uh, no, number two here, uh, you know, therapists will say that they can't love, that the narcissist is, has a, a lack of ability to love, that they can't love, they don't know how. And, uh, you know, they'll tell their targets, oh, you know, I'm sorry, if, you know, feel sorry for the narcissist because they just can't love, they don't know how. Well, that only goes so far. And God is love. If God is love and the narcissist doesn't have any love, doesn't know how to love, and has an inability to ever love, then what does that say? It says that they're opposite of God, basically. You know, sounds like fallen angels to me. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Now, also, another reason is because, you know, it says in the Bible, in the last days there will be lovers of selves warning us about the end days. And, you know, the types that will be walking around the earth. It says, uh, in, in the last days, there will be lovers of selves and those void of natural affection. <laughs> so we know that to be the narcissist of today, no? Yeah, really. So that's right there in the Bible to watch out for those types. And it seems like all of a sudden we have a surge of these narcissists and there's narcissism videos and narcissism articles and everybody's taking selfies on social media and pictures of themselves, 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 and themselves. So I do believe we are in those times and perhaps that could have been a warning that these types are Satan's minions on earth in the last days. It sure sounds like it. Um, they just really leave a trail of destruction behind them. What I find interesting is um, a lot of targets said to me that they found out later that a lot of people, you know, fled the narcissist running and screaming basically in the middle of the night. In other words, if they had to pack up all their things and leave in the middle of the night and not leave a forwarding address on their narcissist, they must have been pretty afraid, <laughs> right? So you hear about this time and time again where the narcissist will say, well, I don't know what happened, but they took everything in the middle of the night and they left and they didn't tell me where they were going and I never saw them again. Well, that's really strange because I don't remember anybody doing that with me, <laughs> you know? I don't know, but it doesn't seem like people had to like run in the middle of the night from me and, and not give a forwarding address. So that really tells you a lot about the person, that they were scary and scary enough and terrifying enough that the person had to just leave without any notice in the middle of the night. So <laughs> take heed if you hear something like that. That is not normal behavior, and that's telling you that you're dealing with a dangerous person. So... Uh, a lot of times the damage that uh, happens to these targets, having to get up and leave and run for their lives or losing everything they had to the narcissist or having to move. I mean, so many targets have had to move several times, costing them thousands of dollars to try to keep safe from the narcissist and get out of their radar. Um, you know, really, really does a number on them. So the aftermath is um, very different from other types of uh, abuse and trauma. The narcissist tends to purposely, purposely and intentionally target people so to con them and uh, fool them. You know, their intention when they target somebody is not to love them. They have no intention of loving anybody. Their intention is that that person will love them, serve them, and that, you know, they'll give them what they need. 
but it's not the narcissist's intention to help or care for or love the other person at all. They may say that in the beginning, but that's not their intention. They purposely target people to get what they want from them without a thought, and they have no intention of loving that person or implementing anything they promise. So that is evil as well. Another thing they do that leads me to think that they are, you know, demonic in, in origin is that, um, you know, their smear campaigns, you know, they purposely lie and tell falsehoods about people destroying their character, their reputations um, with their family, their employers, their friends. It says about the, um, you know, deceivers and accusers in the Bible. So it tells me they're one of them based on their actions. So another one is uh, the narcissist loves to have their targets live in fear, anxiety, depression, confusion is a big one. So if, if that's not of God, you know, God doesn't create confusion, fear, and anxiety in people. He's not a God of confusion. And that to me is from the adversary. Also, the narcissist never takes into consideration a person's past circumstances or their present circumstances. A person could have just gotten out of the hospital and the narcissist will target them and have premeditated evil intentions to hurt them. Somebody may have lost their spouse and, you know, the narcissist never considers that, that the person is heartbroken and lost their spouse. They'll still target them for destruction anyway. Uh, another case would be if somebody, you know, just lost their job or went through a divorce or, ha you know, has a special needs child, <laughs> whatever the circumstances are, or the past circumstances of the person, the narcissist doesn't care. They really aren't empathetic or compassionate towards people's circumstances. They're just looking to get what they can get. And they have no intention of loving that person. They have no intention of helping that person. Their intention is to help themselves to whatever they need that that person has. It could be a nice home for them to live in. It could be, you know, a dinner companion because they can't be alone. It could be um, just somebody to pay attention to them and hang out with. It could be somebody that um, has money, you know, that they're trying to get for an investment or a business or something. You just never know what the narcissist is looking for, but I guarantee you it's for their own benefit. They're not there to help that person who had unfortunate circumstances or an illness. I guarantee it's not their intention to help that person. You know, I'm sure a lot of you have dealt with your narcissist during a time of illness or uh, a time when you needed them. Many times, you know, they're nowhere to be found. Sometimes they go through the motions and will provide the basics, you know, which kind of mimics that, oh, they're taking care of me or they're concerned. But basically, narcissists learn how to go through the motions of tasks and obligations so to look like they care. But when it comes down to heartfelt concern, empathy, compassion, and um, having good intentions, they don't. Uh, their intentions are geared to, uh, you know, to themselves, basically, and what they want, what they need, and they have no intention of caring about your concerns, really, at all. If they provide things for you or they carry through with some tasks, it's just to maintain you as supply for what they need. So another thing would be... Um, you know, they repeat abuse. So even though they're victimizing people that are widows and widowers or somebody that just went through cancer treatment and, you know, is recovering, um, they think nothing of discarding that person and then returning again to reabuse them some more. They don't take into consideration, as I said, what anybody is going through or has gone through or what losses they've incurred, or what heartache they've had in their life, the narcissist doesn't care. 
you know it's it's really shocking to see how they do things and uh, the victims like traumatized still hasn't gotten over the abuse and the person's back to reabuse again or hoovering again to try to reabuse it's like they block it out of their head and it didn't happen but to the victim it is devastating and traumatic they are feeling all the effects of the abuse and it's very hard for them to forget so anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, there's many, many reasons, logical reasons, why, you know, I believe and others believe that these types are a form of spiritual warfare today against God's people. There's, there's way too many in number globally. There's way too many people reporting on these types, having the same type of behavior, which is very strange. Uh, people have witnessed so many... Um, poltergeist like happenings around them and that's a whole other video by the way uh, so if you have any any instances of that I'd love to hear them in the comments um, but there's all kinds of reasons why uh, we feel the way we do and uh, for those of us who have lived through the trauma you know there's no doubt in our mind that this is pure evil that we've encountered so Anyway, guys, I hope this was helpful, and uh, hang in there, because it does get better. No contact is the way, but the best contact is the contact with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Do keep contact with the Holy Spirit, and seek the Holy Spirit's help. He's the helper. He will strengthen you to remain no contact, and if you're still involved with your narcissist, he will, Holy Spirit will give you the strength to endure and uh, deflect any you know, schemes from the adversary that you're dealing with and give you the strength to uh, do what you have to do on a daily basis until, you know, the Holy Spirit gives you the direction to take, whether to stay, whether to go, that's not for me to decide. You know, that's for you to take up with God. And uh, nobody, though, should deal with any type of physical abuse or mental abuse. Mental abuse many times is you know, just as bad as physical abuse, if not worse. There's no scars. People tend to not believe you. And um, the effects are very, very long lasting. So remember that God does not want, doesn't want anybody to suffer abuse or be in an ungodly relationship with somebody who is not respecting you and honoring you in life. So remember that. Okay, everybody, I will see you next time. And uh, if you have any comments about this or any feelings as to why you feel the person you encountered is demonic in origin, please put it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. And uh, I will see you next time, everybody. If anybody wants one-on-one -on -one Christian guidance, please email me at angelhavenministry at gmail.com. And uh, I will write you back on how to do that. And again, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps to get this information out to more people and also helps the ministry grow. So thanks, everybody. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.